Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and uh, you know, not every day do I see a gaming company make an apology letter to an entire group of gamers because apparently there's been some offense flying around. Now, this is Assassin's Creed's Twitter account, and this is the Shadows team having a message for the Japanese community. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is not so because of the controversy, it's because I am an Assassin's Creed fan. I want to preface this video by saying that I've been playing Assassin's Creed since the original, you know, Altair days, and I basically never skipped an entry. And that doesn't just mean the mainline entries. I've played some of those side-scrollers, I've played the Vita games, the PSP game, you know, I've even played the DS games because, honest to God, that's just all I have. Now, you might be wondering, Mudo, why do you like Assassin's Creed so much? Well, it's because Assassin's Creed has this aura of sci-fi and historical, like, merging that I'm absolutely a huge fan of, okay? One of the things that I want to talk about is back in the days of Assassin's Creed 2 with the Ezio trilogy, which some would consider to be the peak, okay? The peak of the franchise. It's kind of funny when the peak of the franchise is literally the... <laughs> Like the, like the first, what, four games? Not, not, not looking at the rest of the stuff that came out afterwards. Oh, no. Uh, it's those era of games where they had things like glyphs and rifts where occasionally as you were playing these games at like one in the morning on a Friday, uh, you might be like, whoa, why, why, the, why the fuck is the game uh, talking about JFK's assassination or crazy conspiracy theories? Hello, Comstead at Customer Support. Diana speaking. I'm calling in reference to your HD cable service. Uh, there seems to be some kind of picture between the channels. Well, that's funny. Are you sure it isn't just one of those premium movie channels? I didn't used to have a premium package at home either, and sometimes little snippets of the channels would come through when my son Jimmy pressed the clicker too much. How old's you, Jimmy? Ten and cute as a button. Thanks for asking. My pulse 12. But no, this isn't a clicker problem. I go to change the channel from 172 to 173, and instead, uh, there's this other channel in between. I'm looking at it right now. It's uh, some kind of menu. Sounds like our guide channel. Why, just the other day, Jimmy... It's not the guide channel. It has my name on it, my son's name, and a list of things we like. My credit card purchases, loans, travel. And then after that, there's this gibberish about biometric patterns and optimal screen refresh frequencies. There's some kind of heart monitor things that says EEG wireless next to it and ARAS. I don't know what the particulars of this are, but it looks like your cable is programmed to have some kind of effect on our bodies. Well, sir, I don't even know how to respond to that. Uh, one second, my supervisor has just come over. She says I should transfer your call. Have an ecstatic day with Comstatic. I have been briefed on your problem. A technician is on his way. Uh, thank you, but, but the more I think about this, the more I think something bad's going on here. Our technician should be there any minute, Mr. Jameson. But don't bother, I... Have a good day, Mr. Jameson. Yeah, it's because these games were kind of unhinged to the point where they had aliens at the end of uh, Assassin's Creed 2. Oh, Muda, you spoiled the game. The game's like 15 years old at this point, okay? All right, it's nearly old enough to drink in my country. So, yes, I will be spoiling Assassin's Creed 2. Yeah, the game is old enough where you literally come across aliens that uh, have been guiding and, and running a human war between each other. It's an insane story, okay? If you tried explaining it to people, they would think you're fucking cracked. Now, the to understand the Assassin's Creed Shadows controversy, we have to look at two protagonists, okay? One of them is a stealth protagonist, which is so stealthy that most people don't even know she's in the game. Fujibayashi Nawe, okay? A Japanese native. Uh, who is apparently a, uh, you know, Japanese Konoichi, okay? This is a stealth operative, uh, stealth, stealthy character. This is the stealth build character from the game. And uh, on the other end, you've got Yasuke, okay? A samurai, a African samurai that operates in Japan. Now, I want to show you the edit history to the Wikipedia page. This has been going on for a while. You think actual gang wars are scary? Never step in between Wikipedia editors and a fucking Wikipedia page. You see the amount of edits going on over here? They do not even care, ladies and gentlemen. They are fighting. Uh, for instance, right here, Rontan 5 on the 23rd July 2024 says, Was not a samurai. 
Thomas Lockie has been caught lying. English teacher Lockley wrote fiction book about Yasuke being samurai in English. But the same book he wrote in Japanese where Yasuke is not a samurai. Lockie was hoping the Japanese never find out about this. Yeah, it's so funny reading some of these edits out of context because god damn, Wikipedia and their and their aim for historical accuracy is a little unhinged sometimes. But yeah, Yasuke, for anybody that doesn't know, if you want to actually look into him, was a man of African origin who served as a samurai to the Japanese daimyo Oda Nobunaga for a period of 15 months between 1581 and 1582. And they've got, like, not just one source, motherfucker, they've got four sources back-to-back -back assisting the situation. Now, to understand, this is the controversy here. For the first time, obviously, Assassin's Creed has been using an actual historical figure as a, a protagonist. Typically in Assassin's Creed games, most of the protagonists are like, you know, just random creations, okay? You know, it's not like you're playing Assassin's Creed 2 as Leonardo da Vinci. No, you're playing as Ezio Auditore da Firenze. How many times in history books can you look through where you can find Ezio's name? Probably zero, because he was a fictional character. The thing with Yasuke, somebody who actually has a recorded history, sparks some controversy because why does a franchise that typically relies on a bit of historical accuracy, for the most part, need to just create fan fictions of a certain character? Now, I personally do not care about this situation whatsoever. I think if I'm trying to look for historical accuracy in a game that has fucking aliens, I am an unhinged nut job, okay? So according to the Japanese who apparently have not been taken too kind to it, I want to read this apology here. To our esteemed community, a message from the AC Shadows development team. First, we want to express our heartfelt thanks for all the support the Assassin's Creed series, which now has its own history spanning almost 20 years. God, I'm old. Now has its own history. Okay, over this time, we have explored various settings, time periods, and characters. From an assassin during the Third Crusade to a Viking in 9th century England and countless more. All characters, by the way, that I believe do not have any historical record. What They're all fictional. For many of our team, creating an Assassin's Creed game set in feudal Japan has been a long-cherished dream. It actually has been a dream of the fans as well. You think when Assassin's Creed Origin was set in Egypt, we were like, wow, that's unheard of. No, nah, fans been talking about that shit since Assassin's Creed 3, okay? It's just a matter of time before they actually jumped in and did it. Since the announcement of Assassin's Creed Shadows, we've received many positive reactions but also some criticism, including from you, our Japanese players. We share our passion or your passion for history and deeply respect your care for the historical and cultural integrity of your rich heritage, which the Japanese people have a lot of, by the way, okay? I want to just stress as the same company in their gameplay reveal when it came to like Yasuke fighting in the streets of Japan. <laughs> they had to put like hip hop soundtrack in the back as if that, like, why why did you do that? The people, <laughs> I am just... <laughs> why? <laughs> why hip-hop in an historical game makes no sense. We would like to address a few points to clarify our intentions. Okay, what's the intentions here? Overall authenticity efforts. We have put significant effort into ensuring an immersive and respectful representation of feudal Japan. However, our intention has never been to present any of our Assassin's Creed games, including AC Shadows, as factual representations of history or historical characters. Instead, we aim to spark curiosity and encourage players to explore and learn more about the historical settings we get inspired by. AC Shadows is first and foremost designed to be an entertaining video game that tells a compelling historical fiction set in feudal Japan. And they mentioned their team extensively collaborated with external consultants, historians, researchers, and internal teams at UB Japan to inform our creative choices. So this is where I'm kind of calling a little shenaniganders here because AC games typically are games that are fictional for the most part. It's a sci-fi scenario where a fucking character gets into a goddamn animus device and experiences the past. However, there's a bit of a mixed sword that I feel needs to be added here. 
For instance, even recently, the last big Assassin's Creed game, AC Mirage, a Ubisoft original, by the way, it's crazy how these games have an MCU intro now, I can't get over that. This was 9th century Baghdad, if I'm not mistaken, that was represented so well, even historians apparently cried at the witnessing of it, okay? See, Assassin's Creed games typically have a lot of historical accuracy. You can load up AC Origins right now and feel as if you are in Egypt, okay, at the time. Not ancient, ancient Egypt, but like, you know, Egypt, right? Back in the day, way back in the day. You know, you can scale the pyramids, you can visit the towns, you can interact with the actual, you know, NPCs and feel like you are in that time period. And it isn't until the game completely smacks you by when you go into one of the pyramids, this is a big spoiler by the way, so feel free to understand and maybe mute the audio for a little bit, during one of the missions, you actually go into one of the pyramids. And what happens? You come across an entire, like, hologram. You come across what, from my understanding, simulation theory. These are games where the historical accuracy juxtaposes with the sci-fi element so hard that there are a few moments that feel downright magical when you play Assassin's Creed. One of the only reasons I've ever really stuck with the series, and my fucking jaw gapes like a child anytime I see stuff like this, because it is just super cool to see. I like seeing old school timelines, old school worlds mixed with sci-fi scenarios, okay? It is absolutely brilliant for me to see. It's the only reason I give a shit about Assassin's Creed. Now, obviously, the community from Japan wasn't taken too kindly, and one of the actual posts right under, literally right, literally right underneath them was when they were starting to focus on, you know, missed historical accuracy right here in the game and its reveals. So one of the interesting things about historical accuracy and making sure you get your shit together and your big team of consultants, it was where one group of salutes on Reddit, obviously, had looked through the Assassin's Creed FR, which is the French, like I believe the official post here. And based on a machine translation, they said the Katana and Yosuke's mask from at Pure Arts Limited, or even artwork from the game, our Ubisoft stand at Japan Expo offers you an immersive experience. We'll immerse you in the spirit of the game with us until Sunday, July 14th, okay? So this is where they show the Assassin's Creed logo. They show, obviously, a samurai helmet. They show a geisha doll. And, of course, they show what appears to be a Japanese sword on a stand right here. Well, interestingly enough, they go down into it and they basically find out that apparently the sword uh, matches the exact sword of a character, Roronoa Zoro, from One Piece, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at the sword right here. You got these two brass X's. You've got the same, like, six square design. <laughs> I mean, are you fucking kidding with me, dude? Literally, even the stand got identified for 40 euros, bro. Katana One Piece, Zoro Sandai Kitetsu. I mean, like, that that right there is, like, debt to rights level insane. <laughs> How is it that you're going to create a game franchise that's under so much scrutiny that out of nowhere in one of the, what, largest expositions in Japan, at least for your industry, you're just going to do this and think no Reddit person is going to pick up on it? Dog, they are Redditors, okay? Trust me, they're going to know, all right? This is not something you do. Like, to be honest, that, that actually is just the funniest shit that I've ever seen. Like, unironically, that is so stupid that I can't even stop, like... <laughs> giggling like a schoolgirl at it. That is about as funny as some of the engineers reportedly who had to deal with the cloud strike issue getting $10 gift cards. I'm not joking. We live in an actual Onion article. It's insane. Now, look, I'm not saying, ladies and gentlemen, that, uh, you know, Ubisoft would dare plagiarize or use One Piece assets. I'm just saying the salutes on the internet make me laugh, okay? That's about it. Um, I do not ever want to accuse Ubisoft of something that I, I haven't personally confirmed with my own eyeballs, okay? I, I, I didn't go to the Jap Japan Expo. I don't know. So even according to a lot of the publications, they said beyond just this, uh, you know, accused plagiarism, there's just no accurate depiction of this Yasuke character at all. That's because the kanji included on Zoro's sword base stems from Buddhist beliefs, and the character in general has moves and ideas that stem from Buddhism. Meanwhile, Yasuke was brought to Japan via Jesuit, which is an order of Catholicism, and even he might have been a Muslim, okay? I don't know the exact accuracy of it. It really seems like, you know, this Yasuke individual is getting more research put in onto him by Japanese historians, and honestly, international historians, 
by things alike. And, and these are just like, it's insane. It, it's wild. It, it's, it's, it's the one controversy where I feel like in, in some way, Assassin's Creed almost like Ubisoft almost like wanted this to happen just to increase like sales and the eyeballs on an, on an Assassin's Creed game. It's insane. So yeah, what have we learned today? The disclaimer, the, the, the disclaimer at the beginning of every Ubisoft game or every Assassin's Creed game is typically a multicultural group of people worked on these games and they're supposed to be historical fiction. And that's really the crux of it, right? At the end of the day, this is not a game that's meant to be completely authentic, all right? It is just effectively using authenticity as a sort of like, you know, gate for you to get into, to get into the world and obviously, you know, bombard you with sci-fi elements and, you know, mystique and intrigue as you play through the single player campaign. One of the actual things that was brought up over here too was apparently one of the arts that were on the uh, wall over here, for instance, didn't even match a certain time period. So even one of the things that got brought up, and I'm sure that some people were like, who the hell cares, all right? This is like a big post. It's like the architecture of the country in Assassin's Creed games from that time is so impressive that it has even drawn the attention of experts. But this part of the trailer is already crazy. With the man who appears to be one of Nobunaga's aides sitting at the same level of Nobunaga, and for some reason the tatami mats are square which apparently they're not supposed to. Look, at the end of the day, a lot of the Japanese people who are kind of worried about like historical accuracy for their own country, there is some genuine worry there. And yet, to an extent, if I was some fucking, you know, Japanese person and, and this Gaijin company came in <laughs> with one piece ass katanas and misrepresented points of history, yeah, there's probably some expectation that people are going to be pissed off. It really feels like for their first big draw at Japan, for instance, right? It really feels like Ubisoft has kind of hit themselves, at least when it comes to not matching everything perfectly, right? For that time period. Which is something that, from my understanding, they've never gotten into controversy before with other games, even if they set them in Egypt or the Caribbean or various parts of the world where, uh, you know, they've matched at least the era, the architecture things well enough to make a compelling single player RPG. And it's one of those things where I think, you know, for me, the Yasuke stuff isn't necessarily that important. I don't care if I'm playing as the Black Samurai at the end of the day. It doesn't really bother me. What does bother me is when obviously people point out that this one era of Japan that I'm playing in, well, they've got inconsistencies on art that is hung up on the walls, you know, weapons, or the way that, you know, customs are presented in that time period. If you point that out to me, the fucking OCD in my brain is never gonna let me actually enjoy the game. And this is coming from somebody that plays American open world games without kilometers an hour, okay? I deliberately set my shit to miles per hour, freedom per hour, just so I can immerse myself into entire video games. I have that kind of a brain. So now going back over here, uh, obviously Ubisoft says, despite these sustained efforts, we acknowledge that some elements in our promotional materials have caused concern within the Japanese community. For this, we sincerely apologize. All game footage presented so far is in development and the game will keep evolving until launch. So they're gonna make it better. They're gonna make some fucking changes and they're gonna hire a team that actually knows Japanese history and make sure nobody else can, make it, can call it out. Based on the constructive criticism we've received and we'll continue our efforts until we put this game in your hands and beyond, which is a great thing to see. We also want to clarify that while we have been consulting with many people throughout the development processes, they are in no way responsible for the decisions that are taken by the creative teams in the interest of gameplay and entertainment. Consequently, we respectfully request that any criticism not be directed at our collaborators, both internal and external. So whatever firms they work with, they just don't want them getting harassed, standard PR stuff. So where they talk about creative liberties and historical inspirations, while we strive for authenticity in everything that we do, AC games are works of fictions inspired by real historical events and figures. That's true, right? I've mentioned this in the beginning. These are, you know, historical games with sci-fi elements added into it. They're not entirely meant to be, you know, historically accurate when you get into the weeds of the story, right? As is evidenced, if you ever played the Ezio trilogy, from its inception, the series has taken creative license and incorporated fantasy elements to craft engaging and immersive experiences. The representation of Yasuke in our game is an illustration of this. His unique and mysterious life made him an ideal candidate to tell an Assassin's Creed story with the setting of feudal Japan as a backdrop. Now, this is where I kind of wonder. For the first time in the franchise, we've actually been given a character that, uh, you know, 
is, is a real person, a real recorded figure in history that is the protagonist. Typically before in Assassin's Creed games, you know, protagonists were, you know, these fictional characters that intertwined with real scenarios, okay? Did Connor from Assassin's Creed 3 ever exist? No, he never did. But did he interact with George Washington? You bet your fucking ass he did. And uh, this is just one of the things that Assassin's Creed was known for, okay? Their usage of Yasuke, I feel in some case, might have been a deliberate use just so that they knew the controversy would happen, right? But honestly, at the end of the day, like, does it really matter, this character, if they change around his, like, history a little bit? It is an Assassin's Creed game, so you already knew that along, you know, just having a historically accurate environment, or at least you hope, the actual game world is obviously, or the story is going to take very much creative liberties for what an Assassin's Creed game is. And the reason I'm making this video is I have the context to provide as an AC fan. While Yasuke is depicted as a samurai in AC Shadows, we acknowledge that this is a matter of debate and discussion. We have woven this character into our narrative and with our other lead character, the Japanese shinobi, Naue, who is equally important in the game. <laughs> Doesn't seem so by the fucking marketing, by the way. Never hear people mention her. We greatly value your feedback, blah, blah, blah. And November 15th, when the game drops, look forward to it. Give an offline disc, by the way, too. Now, I think that's a pretty decent apology, but since we're like 20 minutes into the video, I feel like I want to show you the real unhinged side of why we're talking about this, okay? To give an idea, ladies and gentlemen, apparently I was reading stories about how this reached Japanese government, you know, debates, okay? Somehow the Japanese government actually entertained this. And I was like, that's weird. Japan's going through a birth crisis of the moment right now, an aging population. The fuck did they care about Assassin's Creed Shadows? I doubt anybody in Japan's government even acknowledges it. Well, it turns out that I saw a whole bunch of these clickbait type videos that are like, Ubisoft done for, Japan's government escalates investigations. Is Yasuke is LGBT? This is me figuring out that apparently they're going to make Yasuke gay. <laughs> now, I don't know if Yasuke was gay, but uh, you know, if there's no evidence for it, just imagine. <laughs> imagine dying way back in the day and you're like, man, I can't wait to be... <laughs> I can't wait for everyone to just take creative liberties with my life history <laughs> sometime in the future. AC Shadow's debacle could turn into diplomatic incident. <laughs> Man, you have to be unhinged. God damn. Ubisoft makes Yasuke gay and Japanese government contemplates taking action. So immediately I wanted to look at the veracity of this kind of stuff too because I'm like, that's pretty wild. So one actual post for, or one actual uh, discussion from the Sankei Shimbun, Shim, Shimbun, uh, they actually said Black Samurai, Buddha Game, Ministry of Literature, Public Order and Morals Respond Carefully If Violated. Answers to Satoshi Hamada. So Satoshi Hamada, for anybody that doesn't know, is an actual Japanese politician and radiologist, by the way, currently apparently, or sorry, serving as a member of the House of Counselors since 2019. So this is the guy that apparently wanted the answer. He brought it up and he belongs to a party uh, known as the Party to Protect the People from NHK since 2023. So going back to this actual machine learning translated version, they said a problem that a French game company plans to launch with Yasuke of a black man who served Nobunaga Oda as a samurai of the protagonist is flaming political group, Senator Satoshi Hamada of the party that protects the people from NHK, asked the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. So it wasn't necessarily the Japanese government was starting a fucking diplomatic incident over Assassin's Creed with the French, by the way. This is somebody just brought this up. Mr. Hamada's secretary announced, Soft has been questioned by the accuracy of the depiction of historical roots and has evolved into an online signature activity calling for a discontinuation. So, you know, boycott. The burning Buddha UB... <laughs> I love machine learning too. Soft will be released in November, so the software is coming out in May this year when one of the two protagonists was announced as Yasuke, there was controversy over the real person. Yasuke, was he really a samurai? In 2019, Thomas Rockley, an associate professor at the University of Japan, wrote in 2019 that the epidemic of using African slaves uh, seems to have begun for Sengoku Japan. There are also voices concerned about the spread of pseudo-history. So obviously we know about the name Thomas Rockley from earlier in the Wikipedia uh, Turf War of 2024. But the pseudo-history is an important point, okay? People are bringing up, hey, 
Should we discuss real historical events with some real gravitas? Well, one of the individuals that apparently is a PhD university lecturer at the KUIS specializing in Japanese politics actually talked about this and discussed just how wild this Japanese government situation is. So for a lot of people who are hyping these things up like, oh my God, is the Japanese government really getting into it? The, apparently, according to this individual, the kind of questioning is common in Japanese politics and is often just performative. Many of these content creators did not inform their audiences that the NHK party is a tiny party with almost zero practical political influence in Japan. So this was the collaborative party right here, the NHK. And while the leadership and the secretary general are disputed positions, uh, who totally got their houses in an order, is a populist and right-wing political party in Japan founded in 2013 by activist Takashi Tachibana. So according to this situation, I wanted to go down and see the party has been referred to by some commentators and political scientists as a fringe or joke party. Despite having seen occasional success in national elections, its candidates and office holders, who are often YouTubers or other internet celebrities, have become frequent sources of controversy. The party changed its name several times, with its most recent change in November 2023. So you can actually see, according to Wikipedia here, and please feel free to correct me in a source, uh, councillors, representatives, prefectural assembly members, municipal assembly members, all sit at a whopping zero, okay? So if you think that there's going to be any political capital brought on by these guys, well, maybe it's worth looking into the party first before you parrot that information around for the world to see. So according to Jeffrey Hall, the education ministry statement that carefully handling, careful handling is required if there are suspicions of content that violate public order and morals should not be misunderstood as something big. Censorship takes place when a game contains nudity or extreme violence. You know that amazing game, Dead Space, that released last year, 2023? Yeah, that game isn't even, like, from what I understand, released in Japan because of the gore that was present in it. So Japan has an interesting stance, okay? You know, Minecraft, blockout pornography, gore, extreme gore at least, definitely not allowed, or at least has to be heavily censored. There are a lot of things in the J Japanese uh, entertainment board that, you know, some would obviously question. And there's actually a pretty good channel that you can follow. I think it's Censored Gaming that will actually delve into more of the eccentric shit when it comes to video game censorship in Japan. So at the end of the day, all right, the AC Shadows controversy. It's a bit of a mixed bag. For one, I'll just give my personal stuff. I don't care so much about Yasuke. Is it a game that I want to be playing? I'll probably end up picking this game up when it comes on a sale a month later after release, I'm pretty sure. Uh, just to give it a try, because obviously I played every single mainline Assassin's Creed game. Why not just keep punishing myself, okay? Now, I think it's pretty bad when you're setting your game in Japan, and while you've already got competitors like Ghost of Tsushima that have done a great job, uh, you should, if you're going to make a game like Assassin's Creed be uh, set in a place, you need to 100% match that historical accuracy. You can't make it so that 9th century Baghdad blows everyone's mind away, but, you know, you've got Redditors and Internet Sleuths picking apart your gameplay trailer, which is specifically crafted for this, by the way, and find out inaccuracies <coughs> in the location you set and the time period you portray yourself as, okay? And you need to treat that seriously. And obviously, when your story gets into the sci-fi weeds and whatever, I'm sure anybody bitching about this online probably won't play the game far enough to even really care, or they don't care to begin with. The other thing is, obviously, the game being investigated by Japanese governments. Uh, I wanted to look into it because that would have been a hilarious thing to discuss. But ultimately, that's not where the story is led. They need to get their shit together at Ubisoft if they're going to be releasing a game like this and be handing out bullets for all the internet culture warriors to pick out when it comes to this game. But yeah, ultimately, that's really all I can say. There's a lot to discuss. And, uh, you know, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. Just a fair reminder, the internet is not entirely a real place. According to Amazon Japan of two months ago, AC Shadows was, in fact, one of their big bestsellers in PlayStation 5. So, clearly, I don't think a lot of the Japanese gamers, as do most of the, you know, average gamers that are buying video games, actually give a shit about this, okay? But yeah, when this comes out, hopefully it'll be a good game. I enjoy games being good, okay? Positivity is better than negativity. But anyways, all that hallmark shit aside, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.